All right, we turn now to three brilliant minutes and um, some young offenders in the world of microplastics, apparently. Chris, I don't buy baby food, so this was a big shocker to me, but it's come a long way, apparently. Gourmet, organic, come on. Baby apple well, kale? <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> but nonetheless, it, uh, it's pretty surprising. But here's the other thing that's really surprising about it all. Plastics used for baby food packaging found to release large numbers of microparticles when microwaved and even when not microwave. Take a look at this. So the team removed all of the food. They washed the containers. Some of them were just filled with deionized water. Some had a very mild acid solution to simulate acidic foods. And then they went forward with their tests. They heated the containers in a microwave for varying amounts of times. They also tested to see how much plastic was released prior to heating when products were kept either at room temperature or in a refrigerator for a length of time. Okay, here's what they found. Amounts of microplastics vary dramatically, but all samples contain high amounts of plastic. One container that simulated food refrigerated for six months released approximately 580,000 bits of microplastics, and when that same tainer, container was microwaved, it released another 4 million Whoa. particles. So and we know where it's being released to, right? Correct, into baby and then into wastewater. Right, 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 right into the food and into the child. Yeah, so it's something to think about. Hey, it wasn't that long ago we had this story about oh, yeah. um, eggshells mm -hmm. being used as uh, bone grafts right. because it's mostly calcium and phosphorus. I've got a related story, and this one's really interesting. It's out of Denmark. Research team achieves near-perfect bone healing with new multi-leveled scaffolding, okay, essentially. And it's important because bone is the second most transplanted tissue in the world. I did not know. There's a big okay. need for bones. So with this, uh, what they're doing is this little scaffold, which is pretty much in the center of your screen here, it's all organic materials. And in fact, this entire process, all of the things involved, contains things that have already been approved by the FDA and or other government agencies. So it's kind of off the shelf and ready to okay. go, okay? So what they do is they enrich the scaffolding with certain minerals essentially needed for bone growth, also some substances found in seaweed, and then it's enriched with stem cells from the donor patient, so to speak, then implanted, and the result is that the body latches onto it very quickly with its native bone. Very few uh, you know, rejections or infections and near-perfect bone healing in eight weeks. And I know what you're thinking, and I've had a few broken bones in my life. Bones will heal in six to eight weeks now. So what's the big deal here? Because this is only the first step. Because now they're experiment, experimenting with things called chemoattractants that will help to speed up the migration of cells into that implant, possibly lowering the healing time to as short as four weeks. If you can heal a bone in four weeks, that's a big game, game changer. changer. No yeah. question. Very yeah. interesting stuff. Okay. All right, Brad, thanks so okay. much. We will see you again next week.